Let's move on to item number 11. What is the probability of getting a sum of six when a pair of dice is rolled? Is it five over 36, two thirds, five sixths, or one ninth? So what do you think? Based on what we did earlier by the fundamental counting principles uh, principle, there are six times six or 36 possible outcomes in all in rolling two die, two dice. And those outcomes that add up to six are the following. You could have either one five. One five means uh, the first die showed one. And for the second die, it showed five and so on. So you have one five, you could have two, four, three, three, four, two, and five, one. If you could see there are five outcomes in all in getting a sum of six, and that's five outcomes out of 36, hence the probability of getting a sum of six is five over 36, letter A. Number 12, a company issues a four-letter security code from the English alphabet to each of its employees. How many distinguishable codes can be generated if each letter can be used only once for each code? Is it A, B, C, or D? What answer did you have? We have to remember that the English alphabet from A, B, C, D, all the way until Z, we has uh, 26 letters. And by the fundamental counting principle, the first, uh, you could use 26 for the first slot. And if you used one of them, you could use 25 for the other for the next one because you are not supposed to use what you used here on the first and that repetition is not allowed if you used one out of these 25 you could have 24 left for the third and lastly you have 23 options for the fourth um hence you have the product of 26 25 24 and 23 and that's 358,800, letter C. Number 13. What is the mean of 24, 28, 32, 36, and 40? Did you go for 32, 31, 30, or 29 and a half? So to get the mean, we have to get the sum of these numbers and we have to divide the result by five because there are five of them. So with that, the mean is 24 plus 28 plus 32 plus 36 plus 40 all over five. Getting the sum would be 160 over five or that's 32. Letter A. Or if you wish, you could see that 28, 30, when, uh, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40, these are terms of an arithmetic sequence. And if ever that happens, and if there are odd number of terms, then the middle term is always the arithmetic mean. So here, 32 is the middle, so I'm sure it's the mean also of the terms here. 14. Determine the median of 18, 15, 17, 21, 45, 30, 19, and 23. Is it 19, 20, 21, or 23? Now, if you could see from here, The numbers involved here are not yet arranged in ascending order. So let's arrange them first before we determine our median. 
So if we arrange this, the smallest number should be 15. And the last number should be 45, which is the largest. And we have uh, rearranging them. We have the following 15, 17, 18, 19, 21, 23, 30, and 45. Since we have eight scores and eight is an even number, to get the median, all we have to do is get the mean of the two middle scores. So we have to add them and divide the result by two. Hence, the median is 19 plus 21 all over 2. That's 40 over 2 or 20. Letter B. All right. Moving on to number 15. Which of the following is true in a normal distribution? Is it mean greater than mode? Mean is less than median. Mean equals mode. Or mean is less than median is less than mode. What do you think? So from here, remember this. If the mean is greater than the, mean, uh, the mode, the data is actually positively skewed, most likely. When we speak about positively skewed data, majority of the data or majority of the scores or numerical data, majority of them are low. If the mean is less than the median, it's actually a negatively skewed distribution. So if this happens, more or less, many of the scores are high. In a normal distribution, the mean is equal to mode. In fact, the mean, median, and mode are equal for a normally distributed data. And for letter D, the mean less than median, less than mode, it's in fact negatively skewed uh, distribution or day of data. Hence, letter C is the correct answer. 16. A roulette numbered 1 to 10 was spun twice. What is the probability of getting a prime number on the first spin and an even number on the second spin? Did you go for one-fifth, one-half, two-thirds, or three-fifths? What do you think? From here, remember that by the fundamental counting principle, there should be 100 possible outcomes in all. How come? There are 10 possible outcomes in the first spin. Also, there are 10 possible outcomes for the second spin. And since these two are independent events, so we have to get their product. That's why you have 10 times 10 or 100 possible outcomes in all. And remember, there are 4 times 5 or 20 ways that are favorable for the said event. Why? The first event is getting a prime. Out of 10, 2, 3, 5, and 7 are prime. That's why there are four favorable ways to get a prime number on the first spin. On the second spin, you should get a 2, a 4, a 6, an 8, or a 10 because it's even. That's five of them. So that's four times five or 20 ways. All in all, to get a prime on the first and an even number on the second. And that's 20 over 100 or simply one-fifth because they are both divisible by 20, which is their GCF. Letter A is the correct answer. Seventeen. A class is composed of 28 boys and 12 girls. In a quiz, the average score of the boys was 87, while the girls 
was 89. Find the average score for the entire class. Did you go for 86.2, 85.4, 87.6, or 88.2? Feel free to pause the video and solve if you wish. And let's reveal the answer now. Since there are 28 boys whose average is 87, then 28 times 87 yields the total score of the boys. And 12 girls have an average of 89. So 12 times 89 will yield the sum of all the scores of the, of the averages, rather, of the girls. The sum. And you have to get the sum of all of them and we have to divide it by 28 plus 12. Why? Because there are 28 boys and 12 girls. So all in all, there are 40 of them. That's uh, 40 is the simplified value of our denominator. And whereas for our numerator, the simplified value of this is 3,504. And upon division, the average of the class is 87.6 letter C. I hope you got it. Number 18. In how many ways can six people be seated in a row of six chairs if two of them insisted to be seated adjacent to each other? Did you go for 720 to 40, 120, or 96? From here, there are six of them. So there is a constraint that the two of them have to be seated with one another. So let's represent those six people as A, B, C, D, E, and F. Let's say those two people that insisted to be together are A and B. And since they are together, so I treated them as this one, as one slot. Each underline, by the way, here represents one slot. So this is one slot for these two people, and one slot for C, one slot for D, one slot for E, and one slot for F. Take note, if they are together, they should be counted as one slot only. So how many slots do you see? We have one, two, three, four, five. That's why there are five factorial ways for them to arrange. However, A and B, could still rearrange themselves in two factorial ways because what's important is that they are together. You could have AB or BA. That's why you have two factorial. Five factorial means five times four times three times two times one or 120. Two factorial means two times one and their product is 240. Hence, there are 240 ways for these people to arrange themselves as long as the two people are together. Letter B. 19. Who invented linear programming? Is it George Danzig, Richard Dedekind, Leonard Euler, or Kurt Godel? What do you think? Who do you think? Let's see if you got it. If you answered letter A, you actually got it right. So linear programming was invented by George Danzig. So it's utilizing, um, uh, if you have certain constraints, for example, then um, that could be represented in forms of lines, then linear programming, the concept of linear programming may be applicable here. Richard Dedekind is best known for his contribution uh, especially the definition of real numbers through the notion of his of Dedekind cut. Leonard Euler founded the studies of graph theory and topology. Kurt Godel is one of the most significant logicians in history. Letter A. Number 20. What is this one? This is the sum of 4 and 5 under addition modulo 7. Is it 1, 2, 3, or 4? 
What do you think? So a little bit of number theory or a little bit of abstract algebra. So if you are having this symbol, we will get the sum first of 4 and 5 uh, in base 10 and get the remainder when divided by 7 because that's your modulo. So this is your 7, it's your divisor. So 4 plus 5 is 9, but again, that's for the base 10 or decimal system. But since this is modulo 7, we have to divide 9 by 7. And if you divide 9 by 7, what's the remainder? The remainder is 2. Hence, we could say that 4 plus 5 under addition modulo 7 is 2. And that is letter B. I hope you got it right. So far, so good. 